we were doing this intro for pickup trucks, I could start it out something like this. There's a new pixie in town, and it's packing 64 bits of rugged, manly power. But that would be a little silly, because we're not talking about pickup trucks. We're talking about a true rangefinder, interchangeable lens, 26 megapixel digital camera. As you know, if you follow the channel, I've been using the previous Pixie model, the A1571, for more than a year, and it was a rocky relationship at first. Eventually, though, I got to the point where I really liked it. Still, one ongoing issue with the 1571 was that it required you to shoot at what you might call a somewhat leisurely pace. But that's changed because now there's a new Pixie model that packs a higher powered processor, a Cortex A55. Pixie says it's the first 64-bit camera, and what they mean by that is that the A55 has a 64-bit instruction set. Oversimplifying a little, I would say that that means that the camera can get more work done with each instruction, and that translates to much, much faster throughput. What do I mean by throughput? Well, it's not continuous burst rate, the kind of thing that the mainstream YouTube channels obsess about constantly. The way you typically use a camera like this is what I might call sporadic bursts. Suppose you're uh, taking pictures of your cat. He does something cute right away. You take a picture. He does something even cuter. You take another picture right away. Then maybe there's a pause of several seconds while he licks himself or attacks your hand or does one of those other cat things. Then he does something else and you resume taking pictures again. The previous Pixie worked fine for casual walking around photography. Its processor queue would bog down fairly quickly. Typically, I'd be able to get off five or at most six shots before the busy cursor would come on. And then I'd have to wait 20 to 30 seconds before the cursor disappeared. The new Pixie, with its 64-bit processor, is much, much faster. One of the first things I did with it as soon as I got it was to get together with my friend Amaris, who's a professional ballet dancer, and improvise some photos in the art center where we work. Amaris is a very creative person. Ideas come to her quickly, so I was constantly shooting at a fairly fast pace. We worked for about 40 minutes, during which I shot about 240 photos. I only saw the busy cursor twice, and both times it only lasted a couple of seconds. Another thing I tried was to go to a dance rehearsal where I spent more than three hours and shot more than 600 shots. I never would have tried that with the previous model because it simply couldn't keep up with that level of sustained throughput. But this new ability to shoot hundreds of shots per hour brings along with it some new problems, and one of them is temperature. The Pixie has a temperature warning indicator, which I'd never seen using the previous model, probably because it simply couldn't shoot fast enough to heat up that much. I've never had it actually force me to stop shooting, but it does serve as a good indication that I need to slow down or take a break and give the camera a chance to cool off a bit. Another thing that is more of an issue now is battery life. Battery life has never been the Pixie's strong suit, but it was something you could manage. The main trick was to keep Wi-Fi turned off when you didn't need it. Now though, when you can shoot for several hours and shoot hundreds of shots, battery life becomes more of a consideration. During my shoot at the dance rehearsal, about 640 photos over a three hour period, I went through three fully charged batteries. That's not awful, I was able to manage it, but when I went back to a similar rehearsal the next night and shot with a Fuji X-H2 camera, I got through the whole evening on only one battery. Battery management is going to be more of a problem with the Pixie if you plan to use its new capability to shoot a lot. Another new feature that the new processor makes possible is live view. Now wait, you say, how do you have live view on a camera that, like the Pixie, notoriously lacks a back LCD? Well, the answer is simple. They put it in the phone app. There's a little panel at the bottom of the phone app that you can pull up. It displays a live view image as well as a metering indicator and a button you can use to release the shutter. But are the new capabilities and features going to be enough to turn the Pixie into a mainstream camera? Well, I hope not, and I don't really think so. For one thing, a lot of people are never going to be really comfortable with a true rangefinder camera. 
takes time to learn how to compose using the rangefinder spot and the bright frame lines in the viewfinder. It's not as easy as using the cameras you're probably used to, but if you do take the time and if it does appeal to you, it's a time-proven way to do what I like to call observational photography. Photography where you walk into a situation without preconceptions, try to observe and understand what's going on, and then select the moments to tell the story. Having said that, I also have to say that the Pixies Finder system is maybe not the easiest to get used to. Compared to other cameras, I'd say it's definitely better than the Finder systems on any of the Canonettes, the Olympus 35 SP, the Olympus XA, any of the compact leaf shutter rangefinder cameras that the YouTube film photography bros love so much. I'd also say, although this is a personal opinion, that it's also better than the finder systems on any of the Soviet era rangefinder cameras except the Leningrad. And trust me, there are plenty of other reasons you don't want to get mixed up with the Leningrad. I'd also rank it above the finder systems on any of the classic oldies, the Zeiss Icon Contessa, the Kodak Signet 35, uh, any of those 40s, early 50s cameras. Having said that though, I also have to say that if you're accustomed to shooting with a Leica M camera, with one of the Cassina Bessa cameras, or with the Epson RD1, which of course is based on Cassina mechanics, you'll find the Pixie's rangefinder spot is not as bright and not as clear. If you're used to working with one of those cameras, you can accustom yourself to working with the Pixie and get good results with it but you will feel as if it's a step backward in terms of the comfort of the viewing experience. Some other considerations too that haven't changed with the new processor. For one thing, the Pixie has no mechanical shutter. If you're taking pictures of ordinary human speed activities, that's probably not a problem. But if you're going to be shooting race cars or track and field athletes, it's possible that this may cause motion distortion. The lack of a mechanical shutter also means there's no way to sync electronic flash. Now I got curious as to whether using electronic flash was impossible or merely inconvenient, so I made up a little test. So the new A55 upgrade makes the Pixie faster, more productive, and better than ever at what it does. So I think it'll remain a cult camera, but it wouldn't surprise me if the cult gets bigger. Mm -hmm.